Molly Perlman here, reporter for El Segundo TV. And if you are a fan of all things local, you found the right channel. You always want to be aware of your surroundings, no matter what time of day. And when entering in personal information, always make sure to cover the keypad. Keep on Trucking is the name of today's event, featuring food trucks from all over LA. After watching the students for a few minutes, I decided to give ice hockey a try. Tax season is officially in full swing, and this year the deadline has been extended to April 17th. I finally selected my summer reading, and the best part is, I got it signed by the author. These kids have been given a second chance to play some baseball that they will always remember. For El Segundo TV, I'm Molly Perlman. The key to sailing is balance. In order to keep the boat flat, you've got to hike. Recreation Park is barely recognizable tonight. It has been transformed into Broadway in the park. With all this talk about the pizza, I just had to try one. Fires are also very common around this time of year, and knowing how to prevent them can make a difference. From the very colorful to the very creative, these light displays are amazing. Be careful. Oh. Um, I don't want to go these... forward and kill my camera. <laughs> right, well don't touch those buttons then. Well, we've seen some creative costumes, incredible pumpkin carvings, and played some challenging carnival games. Private Jared DeNicola, who served in the Army's 4th Brigade, 10th Mountain Division recently returned from Afghanistan. For right now, 25 feet is high enough for me. For El Segundo TV, I'm Molly Perlman. Stopping by the gas station is very routine for most car owners. But as you fill up and pull away, a criminal could be emptying your bank account before the end of the day. Skimmers can be either electronic or some type of digital device. They come in various forms, but the purpose of them is to capture the information that is encoded on the magnetic strips um, on your bank cards or your credit cards. While some people are aware of these types of scams and take preventative measures with their credit cards. Well, I only carry one. I always have it with me and uh, I check my bill very closely. Others unfortunately have found out the hard way looked at my bank account and found that there were like there was like a thousand dollars pulled out of there at one point and so that was scary. <laughs> you always want to be aware of your surroundings no matter what time of day and when entering in personal information always make sure to cover the keypad. One thing you look up when you look at the pump make sure the card reader this one is inside or inset into the pump but a lot of times they are sticking out, so if there's one here that does not look like the other card readers, obviously that would be an indication. So far, only one skimmer has been recovered from a gas station on the 600 block of North Sepulveda. They were just doing normal maintenance. They found this inside, so usually these are placed inside only a couple days because the suspect will put it in when no one's around, probably late at night, and come back a day or two and, and take it out. Luckily, this one was found. In order to protect yourself from this type of scam, the police department advises customers to do the following. One, go inside to swipe your card. Two, don't let employees take your card out of your site. Three, check your credit card statements frequently. And four, do not use a credit card reader if it looks like it's been tampered with. If it's been tampered with or you think it's been tampered with, I would first report it to the gas station so they can shut down the pump or at least place some sort of notice so no one else is compromised, but also call the police department um, in the jurisdiction you're in so they can respond and they can also look into it. After learning about skimmers, this customer won't let herself be a victim at the pump. I guess I'll just sort of monitor that card even more if I can, but you know, you have to get gas, so it's one of those things that you just kind of have to deal with it and monitor it as much as you can. So the next time you fill up your tank, take an extra moment to look around. If something doesn't seem right, follow your instincts and make safety the priority. Reporting for El Segundo TV, I'm Molly Perlman. Get ready to be entertained by a group that aims to bring the joy of music and performing to students all over the world. The Young Americans easily rivals Glee and High School Musical because they actually invite the students to get on stage and participate. Let's take a look. We're starting off strong with one of my personal favorites, Grease. Come on, Elsie Gondo, let's rock! El 
Segundo fourth through 12th graders had the time of their lives as they performed along with the young Americans. Those who took part in three-day workshop and performances had their own unique experiences. I think it was getting my solo and standing on stage and singing in front of everybody. It was really fun. I just like hanging out with everyone and made new friends and like doing dances and songs. I like spending time with the young Americans and pretty much everything. <laughs> I just love how uh, inspiring the young Americans are. They're very encouraging and uplifting. I just love the environment and uh, it's fun just going out there and performing and uh, being with your friends. This participant who shows that you can play varsity football and stay active in the arts says that the workshop's been a fun experience to share with his little brother. He actually showed me how to do the opening number and it just kind of all clicked because we did it last year as well. So uh, it's kind of fun, a little brother bonding time almost. Robin Funk, who is the chairman of the Young Americans Committee and has been participating in this program for 10 years, is still moved to tears by these performances. It made me just, you know, so emotional just to see this group of kids who are passionate about what they do, passionate about bringing music to schools all over the world. And the songs that they sing are from their heart, so it, it was very moving. Keeping music alive in the schools, especially during budget cuts, is something that Robin feels is essential. Having the kids be able to participate with the teamwork that they learn, the creativity, the expression, it's just, you know, so valuable. The Young Americans came to El Segundo as part of their international music outreach tour. The musical specialist at Richmond Street Elementary made this all possible. She was a Young American and toured the country after graduating high school. It's something they'll never forget, for sure, like it touches their life, but the performers, they get something from it too. Yeah, it shapes the rest of their life. She's glad that the group continues to make El Segundo one of their tour stops. It's wonderful. I get, to, I get to watch what I used to do, and I get to watch my students. I love that part, too. I'm watching them on stage and, and seeing how much they've grown and hoping I had a tiny bit to do with that. What's amazing is that the kids in the workshop learned all the choreographed dance routines and songs in just a mere 10 to 11 hours. It takes students who may not think that they can stand up there and be out of their comfort zone and it puts them in a supportive environment. If you watch the Young Americans during the performance, the students are never unsupported. They are always backed up and they always come across and it's always a positive experience. No matter what happens, it's a positive experience. And watching her daughter perform on stage makes her extremely proud. Because she loves it, it's, I don't have any words for that. It, I, and, and it's tough for me to not have words for something. So it really is indescribable. It's a gift you can't measure. While many of these students hope to one day tour the world with the young Americans, here's some very encouraging news. 14 El Segundo High School graduates have moved on to become young Americans. I saw a show and was like, oh my gosh, I have to do this. And so my sophomore year they came and I did it and I was I was like, I want to be a young American. This nonprofit organization that's also accredited college is structured somewhat like an internship. But being a young American gives these performers many opportunities most people their age do not get. You get to meet so many people and you get to talk to so many kids and you get homestays and homestays are the best part of tour. Like just getting to stay in a town and getting to experience that culture. If you talk to different young Americans, they'll share their personal story of how they got here. I just tried out, like, I just, I was just really, really passionate about it. Like, this is, this is my favorite thing ever. And, like, singing and dancing and teaching is all I could ever ask for. I danced with a local ballet company in Bangor, Maine, where I grew up. And a girl I danced with married a young American, and they suggested I audition, so I sent in a video. After a three-day workshop and back-to-back -back performances, you think the young Americans would get a break. Not exactly. Tomorrow they start a tour, which will take them to England, Ireland, Scotland, and Wales.
fly into London Heathrow tomorrow, and then we drive to Scotland and start another workshop that day. Always on the move. The production, which was put together in only three days, would have not gone off so seamlessly without the work of the artistic director, who, believe it or not, was a young American himself back in 1973. Throughout his 39 years with the organization, he's seen many success stories. So, for example, uh, Sherry Steinkeller, who was a new young American with me in 73, created the TV show Cheers. The gentleman that created Desperate Housewives. The choreographers for, like, Hairspray on Broadway. Some of the leads on Broadway were young Americans. Working in the young Americans is not your typical nine to five job, to say the least. You really get the sense that those who are involved in the organization are doing something that they really feel passionate about and as though they are making a difference. It's like we have something happen daily that some people may not have in their whole life. And it happens so often, experiences that are just overwhelming. I love doing Young Americans. And I always have and I always will. Um, so that's why I continue to come back year after year. It's been an amazing weekend of laughter, new friendships formed, life-changing moments, and possible new Young Americans in training. For El Segundo TV, I'm Molly Perlman. Once inside, you'll notice that this isn't just your average restaurant. From the music to the artwork, music videos, and outdoor beer garden, you'll definitely feel like you're backstage at a rock and roll concert. And yes, even your four-legged friends are invited to come join in the fun. Love the atmosphere, it's a cool vibe. And the food's amazing, so it's got it all. No matter if customers stop by on their lunch break or for a night out, they're all coming to enjoy what this place has to offer. Great atmosphere, great music, great people, and a great menu. I love the atmosphere. It's like, it's a great little addition to downtown El Segundo. The kitchen manager, Cosme Castro, gave us a backstage pass to watch how everything is freshly made. And what does the chef recommend? The brand new turkey and avocado sandwich. It has bacon, garlic aioli, lettuce, tomato. But the, the turkey, it comes a with pepper, a lot of pepper, I, I really like it. You should try it, <laughs> you're gonna like it too. Some fans of Rock and Brews recommend their favorites as well. Gluten-free pizza maybe? They make this pretzel that's, it's huge. It's the size of a Volkswagen, it's just awesome. If I had to pick a favorite though, you know, it's cliche, but I'm gonna say it's the pizza. It's just, pepperoni pizza here is just fabulous. With all this talk about the pizza, I just had to try one. Mmm, that's really good. <laughs> While getting a bite to eat, customers can select from over 40 beers on tap. Brandon Halverson holds what he calls beer school for his staff so they'll always know what's new on tap. He also says that he picks beer not only based on what he thinks people will like, but also what he can educate people about. There's so many beers out there, people only know about the Bud Lights and the the, the standard beers that you see advertised on television, but we're in the middle of a craft brewing renaissance right now. There are good beers coming from all over the states. If the selection overwhelms you, Brandon says that he'd be glad to help. Uh, if you want to learn a little bit about beer, don't hesitate to ask. I'll be more than happy to pour you a flight and uh, teach you a little bit about the exciting world of beer. We decided to take him up on that offer. So we're here to try out one of the beer flights, is that correct? Absolutely, I'm gonna pour, pour you one of our bartender's choice flights. We'll do the Yellowtail Pale Ale. Next I'll usually go with something a tad bit darker. Um, we'll do the 24th Street Pale Ale. Next on the flights, I'm gonna go with one of my personal favorite beers at the moment. This is the Mongo Double IPA from Port Brewing in San Diego. And then for the final one, I always go with one of our dark beers, which my personal favorite is the Speedway Stout, like I mentioned earlier. Wow, it's pretty good. It is easy to see why Rock and Brews already has so many fans. So how did this place come to be? 
It was actually the dream of veteran rock promoter and co-owner Dave Ferrano to open a rock and roll bar. Our customers like watching music videos and seeing, you know, events and concerts and uh, uh, sporting events. Our environment changes from daytime to nighttime. In the daytime, we like open air, sun, great music. In the evening, we lower the screens over here. And uh, if you're ever driving down the street at night, you'll see that it's really pretty cool. Ferrano was a tour manager for many great tours, including the Rolling Stones, Bob Dylan, The Grateful Dead, The Doors, and many more. According to Ferrano, business was simpler back then. It's not like now. I mean, you know, there weren't a lot of attorneys around. You know, people were shaking each other's hands. They were, we were rock and roll. We were really young. I mean, I was only 21 being, going on 22. Most of the images here are officially licensed images from bands that Ferrano still works for, which is something that he thinks separates his business from the rest. Kind of the big difference between us and the uh, Hard Rock Cafe uh, is the Hard Rock Cafe doesn't sell licensed products. It, it hangs, uh, it sells its own goods. It sells Hard Rock Cafe goods. We in our Rock and Brews will be selling, you know, when U2 comes through town, we're selling U2. In addition to this new El Segundo location, you'll soon be able to visit Rock and Brews Concert Bar during your next trip through LAX where you'll be able to buy concert tickets and t-shirts in addition to being able to enjoy your favorite food and beverage. We'll be the only place at, uh, in, uh, at the airport where if you went to the concert down at Staples Center and you're going out of town the next morning, you're going to be able to buy a t-shirt from last night's concert. In case you need another reason to come out and give this beer garden a try, there are some upcoming events that might pique your interest. For the entire month of March, we have our March Toberfest celebration. It's pretty much the March Madness, Oktoberfest, mixed into one. After that, we have multiple beer uh, food pairing dinners, um, cask nights, pint nights, and all kinds of good stuff planned. So whether you'd like to enjoy some rock and roll, beer, burgers, or some sunshine, Rock and Brews could be the place for you. For Business Matters,